Hello everyone. I'm still testing a few issues, things here. I just installed the Nightbot, but uh, it seems to be not working for me right now. I'm not sure how to set it up. I don't know if, you, if I'm linking it to the right, yeah, linking it to the right account. But uh, it's not, not working for some reason. Application using a project. Yet you can. <coughs> yeah, so today we're going to be doing this. I just wanted to have Nightbot work, but uh, it seems it's not going to work. So. I made a few commands to see. Uh, they don't seem to be working right now. And uh, let's see, let's see. Now, funny thing, my keyboard uh, kind of has an error. It doesn't work. Some of the keys on my keyboard keyboard don't work. Uh, I'm trying to ship a new one, but uh, because of the situation going on, <laughs> it's it's taking too long to add. Uh, the, to get shipped and uh, I have a second keyboard that has some keys not working as well so I'm combining I'm using two keyboards uh, but uh, some of like uh, this number one key doesn't work so I have to use a virtual keyboard to get it to work to do what I want See if this would work. Still nothing. I'm not sure why. But uh, yeah, I guess let's just get into uh, the modeling uh, since this is seems to not be working. So yeah, this is what we're going to be creating. Hopefully, we can uh, get it at somewhere decent. But uh, this looks quite high detailed, and uh, there are a few different ways we can approach this. But I think the best way would to to start by blocking out some of the main structures of the building, and uh, see how things go. So this doesn't really have symmetry, uh, the way it looks. So we might have to model everything on uh, differently, but uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to start by doing this bridge, uh, by blocking out the bridge. We're not going to. We're going to start with uh, simple blocks uh, that are not too high detailed, and uh, then add details later on. So I think this is uh, the length uh, that we can go for the bridge. Just going to start by blocking out things uh, like that. Now we have this building here this main building and uh, the way it looks to me we can start with a cube i'm just going to use a cube here it's quite a large cube something like that so this is going to be our main huh the problem is I only have one side of this. <coughs> okay, so let's see, let's see. We have uh, these towers. This may need to be a bit wider. The bridge might be need to be a bit wider. Hello, Akshay. How are you doing? So let's add one of these towers and uh, the second one we're just going to use uh, the mirror modifier and I'm going to use this bridge as the mirror object since it's the center of symmetry for our objects so something like that let me turn on ambient occlusion so that we can start seeing some our results as we go so these towers we can start even adding in a few 
details here. So I think this uh, extends a bit up like that. Can insert this a bit, give it a slight bevel, and I push it up like that. Then this wall here kind of intersects our these towers, so we might want to push this forward a bit like that. Then we also hmm, want to get the main pieces out of the way. Maybe you can make room for this dome here. Which we could insert from this. Extrude it up just a tiny bit like that. And then Okay, so I think from here we can add a UV sphere like this uh, to be our dome for now, but later we can uh, change it. So just need to, we just need a section of it. Hello, like here, how are you? You are welcome. So scale it. Hmm. I think we need somewhere like that. So I'm just going to select this side, delete that. So that's going to be our dome right now. So by not committing too much detail at once, we can focus on simple areas, on different areas. So we have the same thing going on on this side here. So I think I can just make, duplicate this, Scale that down a bit. Bring that around here. And that there is a kind of a slope here, so I think we can scale this down a bit. Drag it up just a bit to have that uh, slope. And uh, you can see this is not a sharp edge; it's a bit bending or rounded. And I guess we can do that a bit later. We, we don't have to be too detailed right now. And now we can just duplicate this dome again. So this also helps to understand uh, the relative di uh, distance of each object uh, from the other. So something like that. Now we have another bridge here. So I'm just going to duplicate this, <coughs> rotate it 90 degrees. Just bring it just behind here. And I, it seems that uh, this uh, building here, main building, also extends uh, in the back a bit so this side might be a bit flat so i'm just going to make it flat like that uh, we have a face here that i don't want so i'm just going to delete that so then i think i can extrude this back even further and then select uh, this face here, extend it somewhere like that. And I think if we are doing that, we should also do it with it, uh, this side. Tristano, I love your creations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hello, RKB, how are you doing? And I think we also have this main uh, block building here. So I think what is going on here uh, is uh, this building kind of extends a bit. Like this. I think it's supposed to be symmetrical, but I'm not too worried about that. 
and then we have this middle kind of uh, I don't know if it's a pentagon or tri uh, hexagon but I think it's about eight sides just rotate this a bit so that it's flat huh? straight like that then we can scale it up something like this but uh, it also seems that uh, these sides are a bit wider or we can start with a cube because this uh, hexagon or pentagon whatever shape it is it's not acting well so we can just bevel these corners ctrl shift b and something like that and then extrude this up somewhere like that I think we we'll need to duplicate this again uh, for the smaller top dome like that and then we would add uh, this dome again shift D So as you can see, we're not committing too much uh, because we haven't even understood uh, the shape just yet. So we also have a smaller dome. So I'll just do this again for the top dome. Shift B to do it again for the. last dome so we have this bridge and uh, we also have this side which is a bit different from this side so it's not perfectly symmetrical And I think uh, this side has to be a bit larger. So I'm going to extend that just a bit like that. And uh, duplicate it uh, to this side. But this side seems to be larger as well than this side. So how did every object you cre created have a different color in the viewport? Uh, for that, you just go under uh, the viewport shading and turn on random colors so you can see that gives every object a different color and I uh, also like to turn on cavity just to have to see those sharp edges I love your videos watching you try different approaches to solving is something unique to your channel means a lot uh, to learning some someone some to someone learning blender yes uh, I, I don't remember where I first watched it, but uh, I think I saw someone doing something like this, but I, it wasn't exactly using Blender. Uh, so, yes, that's what I'm trying to do as well, because when you watch someone, actually it might have been even in web development, uh, because uh, when someone was doing live uh, programming, so you learn a lot when you see someone trying to solve a problem, and uh, because usually if you're doing the same things, you might run into the same issues. Uh, it's more educated that way, I think. I think this bridge has to go a bit here. And then now I think we are at that point where we might want to start adding in some details. So the first details we can add in is I cut out these areas for the bridge. And I th let's see if we can reuse them anywhere else. I don't think so. So for this bridge, uh, the first thing we can do is uh, add symmetry to it uh, so that we don't have to worry about uh, this side. RKBS, how, what do you mean how? I'm not sure what, uh, what you're asking. Or sometimes one million. Uh, so for this side 
I think we can start by adding this core, uh, this uh, this cutout. So for that, we're just going to use a plane. I'm just going to rotate it. Place me like that. Not to worry about the proportions or getting the proportions exactly as he has it. By the way, this piece uh, is from Art Station by uh, G Yang Jo. I think uh, if you want to check him out, you can just go there and uh, search for his name. Let me see. Uh, I don't think this links to the pin uh, to the Art Station, but uh, yeah, you can just search for me for the name on Art Station. Art Station to get that. Okay, so let's turn this into a bevel object. Uh, first, I'm just going to change the viewport shading to wire. Just select these edges and see what we can do. So something like this. I don't want these to intersect, so I'm just going to match arrows last but I think that's okay. It's not too bad. You can extrude this like that. And I can use this as a Boolean cutout object. Like so. Now I just have to repeat this with an array modifier. Uh, I like using constant offset so that any changes we make are to the to the mesh don't affect uh, the, the distance between any of the objects we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means I need to extend this out a bit. we have six of these I think uh, the separation distance is a bit too high and that maybe we can also scale this down a bit in the y-axis like that and I reduce uh, the separation distance uh, because you can see there is also this gap uh, to the before you get to the actual castle so I think it should be around there so we need to extend this back like that. Uh, we also have a slight detail there, a uh, notch, I'll call it a notch. Uh, so for that, what we can do, we just have to edit this main. Let's add a loop, let me see. By the way, if you're new here, uh, we, we just crossed uh, uh, 200, sorry, 20, 20K subs. So thank you for everyone who has subscribed and uh, if you're new I can subscribe so that we go over and uh, build uh, this channel even further. So I'm just going to extrude this along the normals and you can see now I've added that small detail. I uh, also can turn on uh, auto smooth, shade smooth and uh, also make sure you turn on shade smooth for these other objects, for the boolean objects like that. I think I need to extend this face even further like that. Ah, uh, they don't seem to join. So let's use um let's add let's make sure that the boolean is above the mirror so that we can have this on this side. Now these smaller these other details I don't want them to be part of this mesh uh, because that's going to make it make things a bit harder now we want to do uh, to get the best details with minimum effort uh, so uh, let's not uh, merge uh, this mesh this mesh so let's just uh, create one pillar like this which should be simple you can start with a plane Get the 90. Scale it up. Yes. Somewhere like that. Yes. 
dragged a bit. I think I need to extrude this in, then select yeah, something like that. Uh, it would be better to use um, bevels and so to round off these edges a bit, but uh, you can see this is going to take a lot of polygons. So if you add a bevel right now, and uh, if you add a bevel on each of these objects, it's, it's going to take a lot of CPU power. So that's why I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so let's start adding in more details. I think I can add a loop around there. Uh, before I actually do that, let me just add in this. Uh, I think it's around there. Let me create uh, the actual path. And uh, I usually like to really to look at something uh, beautiful as I'm working. So I'm just going to add in some lights. Just a sunlight to light up the scene a bit. So we can see uh, the shapes much better. Just reduce the angle a bit so that I can see a more, a more con con uh, contrasted shadow something like that so now that we have this in we just need okay this face has to extend a bit down so should this loop I think goes on like that now I can use uh, the array here. Just going to use constant detail, constant offset. Uh, let me show you the difference between constant offset and uh, relative offset. So if I try to extrude uh, this here along the mouse, uh, let me just show you everything. You can see it doesn't affect the positioning of these other objects. But uh, if I had relative distance, so it's something like that, and I try to exclude or scale this, you can see it changes the distance between uh, the other objects. That's why I like using constant offset because it doesn't affect uh, the other objects. So let me just push these out. I think it has to be just a bit. that <coughs> and then now thanks for the array tips ah, you're welcome man you are welcome and uh, we can add in this uh, yeah I, I, I don't like I don't want this mesh to, to be too, too detailed but I think I uh, can get away with uh, just a s slight detail here oh what we can do because I don't want to further subdivide this mesh let's go to duplicate uh, this plane here and uh, first let's see I think first we add in those subdivisions actually I think a better way to approach this would to just use a different mesh altogether. Again, I'm trying to think forward uh, and see what could cause issues uh, later. And uh, I think if I subdivide this mesh further than what I have right now, uh, we might run into some issues. So I'm just going to 
and it's going to be harder to work with. So I'm just going to create, I'm creating these details here. Uh, that looks like rails. And uh, the great thing about doing it this way as a separate mesh is that uh, now I can use uh, the array. And uh, here's another, another uh, tip. Hello, Techno. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, another tip, if you want to copy over uh, the modifiers you have here, you can just select this mesh and then the other mesh that you want to copy the modifiers from and then control L, control L uh, to link other modifiers. Now this is, has copied over the modifiers from this object. Uh, the problem is uh, this, or the orientation of this object is not, as the, is the, is not the same as this. So I need to apply rotation so that we get uh, the same orientation which I think is still not the right orientation. So let's go in here, just copy over this value here, paste it onto the X axis, sorry, the Y axis. I think it's too large. Ah, I think maybe we need to apply the scale. No, I, let me just do this. I thought it would copy over the settings and uh, fit exactly in two position, but I didn't, uh, but that's okay. So what we're going to do here, again, I'm trying to do this in the simplest and uh, none, uh, to, and also while avoid, avoiding some issues that might come up in the future. So what I'm going to do, instead of just extruding this and uh, adding in subdivisions, I'm going to add a solidify modifier. That way, I can just you know we need about three edges like that, and we need two edge loops like that here and here. And now I can select these egg loops and control B to be able them so that we have that. But uh, now I can just select these faces and delete them like that and see we have that detail. Now we can add a mirror, mirror object, sorry, mirror modifier, use this as a mirror object. This is okay. I want this to be mirrored on the opposite side, but I'm not sure why. Yeah, exactly like that. And uh, this should also be mirrored. Do you do 3D for a living or just a hobby? Uh, it's now mostly uh, for a living uh, because I sell them 3D models. Um, yes, yeah, so this is what we have right now. And uh, you can see that uh, this here uh, protrudes out a bit farther than uh, uh, these rails here. So then we can apply this uh, solidify modifier. We just Select, or we can first push this in a bit like that, and then select, I think, this here. And uh, this here, and this. Extrude them out a bit, like that. Now let's work on this tower. Uh, it has this small extrusion here. So we just Alt E because that I think is smaller than that. So I'm going to do the same here. Alt E, push that out like that. I think, okay, also 
also has this extra detail at the bottom so let's do that so it's kind of a slanting angle so I'll just add a loop here select this face I'll push that out just a bit and it also has this uh, thing going on here and uh, to make this easier to model again we are trying to look at look for techniques that are going to make it easier for us to do things in a more in a less yeah in an easier way so I'm just going to first create are we going to create an a boolean object uh, that is going to cut out that detail uh, which is in the same structure as this since how many years are you are you in uh, the business 3d business i think so it's it's about one year now since the release of ev actually uh, that's what that's when i started uh selling 3d models uh because okay applied the scale now and uh let me just uh because uh i always wanted to get into three selling 3d assets but uh I couldn't because you know when you are selling 3d assets you need to provide previews for your models uh, in from different angles uh, a single image you would need about uh, 10 to 5 images and uh, cycles takes a long to, a long time to render you can take something to, to get a good quality image might take you about at least two hours or three hours depending on your computer so rendering 10 images a single model would take a lot of time and uh, to make money selling 3d models you need a lot of models so if you're going to take uh, like two days uh, working on a single model on rendering just previews for a single model uh, that's a lot of time to spend uh, so when EV was released it made it very simple for me to work so I just render through EV using EV and I uh, achieve the same results I would achieve with the uh, cycles, at least possible results. So uh, this is going to be a Boolean object and now we can just bring it in just about there. And I think I did a mistake here. This is a bit smaller. So I'm just going to hit F to clear that and uh, hit F again. And then insert this so that is smaller as that and uh, then push that in. So Ctrl L, select that, and then bring that just around there. And uh, what you can do, you can go under face and use booleans to cut out that piece. Let me just delete this bottom and uh, just re-add it back as an end gone. Just select this. Right decision. Uh, what do you mean? D do you mean uh, selling 3D models? How many models a day? Are you making uh, actually I'm not making that many 3d models anymore I have someone I, I'm hiring now to do the 3d models for me because I can't do YouTube and uh, make 3d models as well because uh, the models that sell are, are not interesting as tutorials to make as tutorials or our uh, videos for YouTube I used to do that but uh, they were not the videos for those are kind of models we are not doing very well uh, so now I con concentrate on uh, just doing YouTube stuff and uh, uh, hire someone to do the, the 3D models. And uh, hopefully, uh, if I start making enough money, I'll hire more people to do that for me. Uh, more people so that we can produce more uh, more models that way. Yes, yeah, so let's see what else, what else, what else. Uh, okay. Uh, I think for the most part, we have, 
I think this the sun is a bit too strong. I'm just going to reduce that a bit. And just make the ambient occlusion a bit stronger, maybe. My work. So deep sink. I'm not sure what you mean. Bro, how much hours a day do you work on Blender? Is it looks you are busy all day? Uh, actually, not. Uh, so when you see me online, uh, that's when I'm working on Blender. Uh, the other times I'm, I'm actually doing s some other stuff uh, because yeah, I'm trying to run a business and uh, in different areas uh, because I'm also a web developer, uh, which also takes a lot takes up a lot of my time. I, I had taken a break from it, but uh, I'm trying to get back into that. I think uh, this is a bit uh, low. Our cast is a bit low compared to this. So, let's see what we can do. Uh, we need to push everything up and uh, let's first hide this. We need to select everything here. In previous versions of Blender, you couldn't do this. and so. Blender 2.8 is really awesome for that. So I can just select all these parts and just drag them up uh, to extend the height of this castle. And I think right now what we can do is... Uh... Hello, Rita. How are you doing? Mm, I think we can start working on this uh, detailing parts of this tower. So I just want to look at this carefully uh, to see how I can approach it, uh, see if any of these parts can be reused uh, instead of just making everything. Hmm. What I'm seeing here is, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me guess my pen tool. This area here could be reused here, uh, could be reused here. And then this area here, this block here, could be reused as this and this. And uh, same with these sides. So to make our work quite easier, uh, we can make these separate as separate objects. What I mean is that uh, we can uh, model this block as a separate object, model this part here as a separate object so that we can reuse it up here and this here we can wait to make it uh, because you can see it's reused in a lot of areas I think maybe actually is it? I thought it would be the same as this I think it's the same as this so we might wait to, re to create it here uh, let's see, let's see, what else can we reuse? I think that's it, and then we can just piece uh, the different parts together. And if we need to reuse them anywhere else, we can do that. So let's see. Are you a man or machine? <laughs> Just, I just love uh, Blender. That's why I spend a lot of time uh, doing it. So, as I said, we're going to block this out in different uh, parts. So let's start with this uh, bottom area. So for that, uh, instead of just deleting this part or reusing that part, I'm just going to start from scratch with a cube. Let's put it aside. Actually, that's a good size, I think. I'm just going to make it a bit like that. And I can select this face, insert it, and drag it up like that. And I will just need that inside, so we should be very, very easy to make. Push that in like that. 
Now let's go to this side, this part here, which should also be very easy to do. I'm just going to duplicate this face, hit P to separate it into a different object, then extrude that a bit. I think this slope here is a bit too much compared to what they have here. So what I'm going to do is just select everything and uh, select this. Just make it a bit. Now uh, let's uh, less a slope like that. I can select this face and uh, push it up. It's a bit tall, so something like there. And uh, now let's see how we can approach this. So to make this easier for me, I'm just going to select these bottom faces and delete them like that. So that when I add a loop here, it doesn't extend all the way to this side. Uh, because if, uh, if this face existed, if both faces existed, and you add a loop, it will just extend to this side. And that we don't need that to be like that. So let's add a loop here. Hmm. Actually, I think, actually no, because I was thinking of using symmetry here, but uh, let's not do that. You have great patience for detail. <laughs> no, I do not actually, I don't. Uh, it's just that, uh, I guess it depends because uh, the only projects you see are the projects that have that have uh, that have not abandoned. You never see the projects are, are abandoned, just because I. And uh, one thing, I, the reason why uh, you see me do a lot of projects is that I only do projects that uh, will take less than a day. So if anything I'm working on is going to take more than a day, I never do it. And that's why you will never see me work on a project more than once. Because I don't think uh, that's a very, uh, that's a great way to spend my time uh, working on a project. Because uh, when it comes to these things, you never know what is going to work or what is not going to. So instead of spending too much work on a, on, on a project, I'll rather do something dif different. So if anything is going to take more than a day to complete, I just don't do it. Uh, so we also have these small details. and. Uh, to make those, uh, I'm not going to do much. It's going to duplicate this, extrude like that. Just create those cubes like that. Maybe just push them inside a bit. Then Shift D. Then I can uh, Shift D X X. Okay, why is this not working? Shift D. Huh. Shift D X then repeat we shift R like that I think this is a bit too tall and you have to be very careful with the battles you choose and how you approach them that's why you see ah uh, this is not how I usually uh, approach a project I would just make model this from start to finish as a single mesh especially a tower like this but uh, if you did that are you going to have difficulties completing the project because I don't think that's uh, that's uh, a clever way to approach a project like this you have to approach it in partitions uh, like how we're doing this otherwise so that is easier for you to do uh, because if I tried uh, to model these details by adding in subdivisions here First of all, it would take a lot of time uh, to model those details in because you'd have to add loops, extrude, uh, bevel if you have to do that. Now that would take a lot of time and you would also have extra residue uh, loops that are going to make, uh, that are going to just add a lot of polygons to your uh, object, uh, which will in turn uh, require a lot of models, uh, a lot of computation power. At the edge of the models, of model, Models bright. How do you make it? Make this. Or oh, the edge. At uh, this edge, 
have highlights uh, that's an under viewport shading so that's cavity so you can see I can turn it on and off yeah it gives uh, the model the uh, the mesh a bit of highlights uh, for the faces or edges yeah, so this part here uh, we can now create this and uh, we have already done that this here so if you if you have done something there is no reason to redo it so we're going to just reuse uh, this area because i think it's the same thing as what we are going to what we are going to create there so i'm just going to select uh, this face here hit plus to increase the selection that might also select hmm, yeah that might also select other stuff but uh, that's okay let's shift d then p to separate it and uh, then remove this array remove the mirror just need to position it just set the origin 90 create this 90 degrees okay just again the only way we can complete this project is by being very wise on how we approach everything so what i'm going to do is uh first off okay this here should be this should be a face filled in like that do the same on this okay, it seems to be okay here we can just increase well, this should be a sharp edge control e mark sharp so yeah we want to add this detail in here without doing too much work so what i'm going to do is select this face here or any edge like that shift s so that i can bring my cursor the origin of this object after that and then i can select this face cursor selected then shift s so i move this to the exact position as this face so that they are intersecting or aligned to one another i just position everything now what i can do is uh, just delete any other things uh, like this behind face that we have that now what I'm left with to do here is just delete let me first delete this face I think so we have that let's bring back everything uh, everything like that now I can delete this face here now del mm, join this to this Make sure I turn on auto smooth. Maybe increase the angle to something like 45. Now, what we are left to do is uh, join uh, the, our detail, uh, this detail, uh, to the rest of the mesh. But uh, I think I need to align. And just drag this down uh, so that it aligns uh, with the bottom here. And uh, the best way to do that is just select that edge. At the bottom and change your pivot point and by pressing the pivot point the period key and get this pi menu and then set um the pivot point to be uh, to active element i can scale this and it should align ah like that now i think we need an extra loop around here uh, which we can also align to this page like that now we just all that is left is to just connect our faces like that and we don't have to do that much work to to get that detail because we, we already done did that so why why are we doing it I can also bring this detail here a bit up let me bring my this back a good point like that 
again other side uh, this area here is going to be a separate object because we are trying to model these wisely so for that uh, what we're going to do is uh, just you can just borrow uh, this edge here uh, this face here shift D bring that up up to level scale it up just follow other shape we have there extrude extrude scale and then push up and then I think that's it let me see I think that's it and uh, now we have this area here we shouldn't be too difficult it is the same exact structure just showed us so I'm just going to select these two uh, this part should be separate just reset the origin as well set the origin of this as well just going to select this and this shift D bring that like so okay we are working on this area here so we need this to be shorter so we can select this so it's around okay yeah it's actually the same thing yeah same size around there Now the question might be here is uh, do we make this as a separate object this area here as a separate object because if we added in loops here uh, to keep it attached to this mesh uh, that's going to be a lot of work for no good reason so let's just go to the top here then add a plane scale it down just have it at the corner here and follow this shape so extrude up around there extrude scaling and create that slanting edge then extrude I think to around here then extrude then let's add a loop around there and uh, control R out ace push that and then I think we can uh, continue this up like that And then I think we're going to need a loop around there. Control B to bevel that. Select this face. <coughs> like that. Push that in like that. Now there are a few extra details in there. Koopa Noopa, how are you doing? How is your day? Uh, the few details inside there but i'm not really i can't work, work them out what other details are uh, so i don't know let's make out let's make up our own i'm just going to shift d duplicate this and uh, let's see what kind of details can we add to this bevel this subtract And it's going to be really far from the camera you won't be able to tell the difference uh, but uh, something small like that can make something look quite good okay. 
Okay, now that we have this side, we don't have to recreate it on this side, we just have to duplicate it. So I'll just select this mesh, mesh and this, Ctrl L, Shift B, drag that. Actually, we haven't completed this just yet. Um, actually, we have, we have, we have, we have. Ctrl L, Shift B, drag this to this side, like so. Now we also have this loop that goes through this entire structure. So let's add that. But uh, the problem you're going to run into is that, uh, okay, actually it worked out nicely. We just have to make sure that it's aligning with this loop here. So control B, label that, control minus, and then alt S, extend that like that details without doing too much work. Now, this this here is almost identical to this here. Actually, we've already duplicated that, so I'm just going to bring that down. I think maybe the scale for this might be a bit larger like that. And uh, we might need a few extra details as well i think we just need to select this face here insert it maybe scale it on the x-axis like that Okay, uh, sorry about that. Our power just went off for a second there and uh, had to rest restart the stream. But uh, let's just continue from where we left off. Let me just make sure that I'm saving a backup, a backup copy here in case that happens again. I don't want our project to crash. Yeah, so we were working on this. Um, where? We are working on this detail here. So we want something like that. So I'm actually thinking whether I want this to be a separate object, not part of this block here. So, but I think we can just have it as, as a separate object. So let's do that. Okay, and I can start by just selecting this face. Okay think it doesn't have to be it shouldn't be a slope extrude has to be something like this and uh, again something like that then we can Select this face. Actually, I think we need to add a loop there, add a loop there. Then we can just bevel them. Control B to extend them to the edge, up to the edge, somewhere like that. Then add a loop around there. Also bevel that, like that. Now we can select this face. That that and that out e and push those inside like that to add in that detail and again if you want to make things look even fancier you can add in extra details inside there so let's this time 
Just add something simple. Play. Again, we're trying to limit the number of polygons we're going to use because uh, the castle you're trying to make uh, is going to take up a lot of polygons. Something like that. I think I'm going to just this time use a triangle. So let me just add a loop here. If that match center, just pull this out like that. Have something like that for our detail. I can just duplicate this, mirror this on the Z axis flip it have something like that and now we can just repeat that detail we shift D X like that shift R to repeat it a few extra times to have something like that I'm sure his details are a bit fancier than what I'm doing but uh, yeah we are trying to do this in a limited amount of time uh, so we are here around here so now we can add in these pillars uh, those small pillars but so we have already done something like that I don't know if it's the same actually it's not the same so let's just select that face I'm not just going to extrude this I'm just going to duplicate it first Then extrude up somewhere like so. Then I can select this face, insert it just a bit, then extrude in. I think something like that. Actually, it might be. select this face I think I need to extrude it out then up like that maybe round off that like that now that we have that we can just duplicate it around Shift D, have it there. Shift D, uh, this time we need to mirror this on the Y. Like so. I don't, don't forget to like the stream if you're new here and also subscribe. So let's see what else we can do. Now this detail here, I think I can't really work out uh, the, de the inside detail. But, uh, before we do that, we can make these beams here. Just select this face. Now something like that. Select this face. It's going to cross push it down a bit. Select this E scale on the something like that. Select this face. Or something like that. Now for these smaller details, it's going to select face like this. Scale it down. I can't really tell uh, the kind of details that uh, are in there, but uh, let's try work out something simple uh, that is not going to take too much polygons. So if I think I'm just going to add a, just slide this a bit, just do something simple like that.
reduce the polygon count and uh, if you want to be fancier again which is going to cost you in terms of memory you can just subdivide these have a slight detail like that and also select this turn on proportional editing turn on connected bring those just offset it just a bit then i can select this outer ring extrude and i feel that duplicate this to add in uh, those detail now I don't like having this space here it's too much but uh, I don't know how I'm going to fill it so let's see if I just select a piece like this like that if there is a way I can use it here maybe something like that might work Again, adding these extra details comes at a cost, so you have to be careful how much you want to add in. I think that looks nice, so we just keep that. Now, we want these details uh, to, be, to, ex to extend on the other side, so I'm just going to select this. that shift D and uh, actually what I can do is just have my cursor centered there and then rotate this how can I model fast and uh, every day sir well you just have to uh, to do it and uh, for the part of modeling fast you just need to practice uh, for the part of doing it every day I guess it's, that's up to you you just have to decide Power went off. <laughs> Maybe we are in the same area. Cooper Nupa. Nupa. Thank you for the commentary. Ah, you're welcome, man. You are welcome. Yeah, we have that. And we think it, come, it came out nice. And now we are actually going to use that detail for the rest of most of other areas. So good that I will spend some time on it now we also have this top section which is a different detail but uh, for now let's let's not, not focus too much on one area so we can just come back to that to that top area later 
truly the sheer quality of your work is amazing. Thank you for the pro for sharing your progress. Uh, thank you, thank you, Rosa. You're welcome. Uh, so let's select this and uh, that. Let's see. Okay. Let's make sure that everything has this origin centered correctly. And we just want to replace these fake pillars with the real ones we have just made. Like that. Just have them in position. I think around there. We'll come to the top area. We'll add it. We'll add it in later. You don't want to focus too much on one area. So after that, and we just have to repeat this on the other side. And for that, I'm just going to use the mirror object, a mirror modifier, and use this as the mirror object. Now I can just copy these sections. Select these sections, Control L, Link Modifiers. We have something like that. I think that things are coming in nicely. You can see this bridge here is the same design as this, so there is no reason for us to re repeat the same thing. So I'm just going to select this entire section. And use Alt D to make an instance. Rotate this 90 degrees and just position it into that area of the bridge. Now I can remove this placeholder block and we have something like that. I also think this this is a higher. So let's do that. Bring it up around I think there and you can also see that uh, this section here is nearly the same thing as this this tower part of the tower it has a few details that are different but uh, we don't care we can just use this shift D just position that Okay, I'm missing a part. Now this time I'm going to use Shift D to move that around there. I don't know if this bridge exists on the other side. I don't think so. So this tower should be around there. If I model this, I'll be trying and falling, failing for days and eventually I'll get angry. It's actually simple, very basic steps. I just have to have the patience for it, I guess. So you pre are not shown. Oh, sorry for that. I want to blend that blend that restarts are uh, the, the shortcuts go away. So sorry for that. But uh, yeah, just have them there. So I don't want this mirror. So to remove that, I can just remove it on one object, then select the other objects, then Control L, Control L, Think Modifiers, and that should take away that. Let's see what else. Now this has a very large wall which we can duplicate from this. Uh, we don't need uh, the boolean for this. I think uh, this wall, we can make it wider like that. Now we don't need uh, these inside details. So what's the best way to get rid of those? Uh, the best way is just to not start with a complicated object like that, but just start with a cube. Uh, Selfie is is kind of is kind of no. I saw your comment and then turned on uh, the keys. Uh, the, the one on turned off. Yes, curl this up. So thank you for reminding me. Uh, 
just around there select this face drag it and uh, this is supposed to be shorter so i hope i didn't use an instance so yeah it's not an instance so i can make this shorter just select these faces bring that around there and actually uh, this needs to extend down something I think somewhere like there now then this comes up around there Then here you can add a loop like that. I'm just trying to look at these details. Okay, it actually has to be somewhere here. Now the easiest way to how to do this would to first get rid of these faces. Otherwise, they're going to cause a few issues. Uh, I'm trying to add in these details, but uh, doing them with these faces there, existing, is just going to make it harder. So now I can just focus on this side. Add a loop there. Control B. Select this edge. Drag it. Out. I think something like that is what we want. Now then I can select this. Actually, because this is supposed to be mirrored on this side, you just have to give it that add a mirror object. To have something like that. This is supposed to be to go down further. Okay. Now there are these details here. That I think we can do quite easily and just repeat them on different areas. Uh, the question is, is it at the right time to do, is it, should we do it now or should we wait a bit? Uh, also, we can start working on this door, which doesn't look too complicated. It's just, you just need a plane like this. rotated I think it should be the same size as our bridge but taller somewhere close to the uh, to our dome apply the scale and then ctrl shift b to round off other corners like that that I uh, actually think I use less polygons I should use more to make this more rounded so I'm just going to increase the polygon count just a bit just match these middle ones okay A few things I'm looking at here that we might need to work out. So let's first get the basics out of the way. We need to extrude this in like that. We might also 
need to use a boolean somewhere so maybe let's just use this as a boolean let's first going to make a copy and uh, this is going to be our boolean object just make sure that uh, it's uh, displayed as a wire and it's a boolean to this object I can unhide the original one and start making edits to that. And see, this is just layers and layers of something like this. Actually, I might leave these as steps, but uh, I don't want how they are kind of being cut off this side. So what I'm going to do is just select them, press Y, separate them into their own objects, scale them on the X axis, then just flatten out these sides. separate them into their own objects to make things easier then this side I can also just scale it down like that and push it out just a bit so that it's not intersecting with the steps like that It's also possible that our bridge is a bit thin or not wide enough or just our mesh not being uh, tall enough. I think I'm going to just select this or push it down as well. going to select these so it has something like that there's a small door as well and again we're just going to duplicate the boolean on this main door scale them down to the size of our door I think we just need to make them a bit taller. Something like that. And now just have to be on the level of the steps, like there. <laughs> and then this here can also use his own boolean object but going to make, turn this into a door frame all I need is to make sure that these are connected using the bridge edge loops 
so make sure that uh, this back side is flat as well. Uh, I think one of the things we didn't do is uh, this bridge here. We might need to add an extra extrusion on the outside just a bit so that it covers the entire door, door frame like that. Uh, which means that uh, now we need to bring this out just a bit is this is this EV or cycles this is EV most of the time I only work in us uh, in EV I rarely work in cycles because it's impossible to stream on my PC with uh, while working with cycles. Now, you know what? What I'm also going to do is just mm, just grab all of this, go to edit mode, and just select. Let's extend the bridge so that it goes out a bit further. Let's make sure that I'm selecting everything. Somewhere like that. Maybe. Uh, this also might need to extend just outside a bit. And see my pivot point. You choose size eyeballing, or you have made you have then made. I'm just eyeballing everything. It's faster, and we're not trying to be too accurate here. I think this. Is supposed to be a bit wider. And that may be shorter. This edge here is a bit carved, so I'm just going to bevel that. Let's apply the scale. So I think this is somewhat in that design. Love your channel, very good work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, let's go this like that. Okay, my, my network went off for a second there, but I think we are back. Okay, so 